This is August 24th, 2018. We're in Bedford, Massachusetts at the Edith Norse Rogers Memorial Veterans Hospital. And this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Jim Ramsey. Our camera person is Maureen Sullivan. We're privileged to have with us today James Nickel. Welcome, James. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being with us. May I ask when you were born? Uh, uh, April 7th, uh, 1928. And where were you born? Chelsea, Mass. And uh, what community do you currently live in? I uh, was raised in uh, Everett, and I live in Saugus now. Okay, and, and, and right now you're actually at the Bedford VA uh, yeah. hospital. Yes. Okay, okay. And uh, are you currently married? I less. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. You, you, you were married. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Twenty-seven. And, I'm in seventy-two. Seventy. Seventy-six years. You were married seventy-six years. Yes. Wow. Congratulations, Mr. Thank Nickel. You. Congratulations. And uh, do you have children? Yes. Gail and Stephen. Stephen. And uh, so uh, uh, where, where do your children live? Uh, Stephen lives in Maine. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gail is here with us. Ah, I, she lives in, she, she's here today. She lives in... She lives in New Hampshire. New, New Hampshire. And do you have grandchildren? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, four, four boys and uh, one girl. Grandchildren? Grandchildren. And how old are they, roughly? Are they in their 20s, say? They're in their 20s. Is any of them married? Uh, the oldest one is married, Gail. I mean, uh, oh, what's the name? I don't remember. Anything. That's okay. Does, uh, does the oldest have any children? No. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, so you grew up, uh, let's see, you were in Chelsea, you moved to Everett. Uh, did you then grow up in Everett? Yes. And you went to, like, school, public schools there? I went to the public school in ninth grade, and I went in the service. Oh, from ninth grade, I see. So... Uh, so when did you enter uh, the military? In 1944. And which branch? Navy. And did you uh, enlist there in Everett? I enlisted from Everett. Okay. Um, why, why did you decide to enlist? Because a uh, history teacher joined up and we got word that he got killed. Mm. And so it's about eight of us signed up. Wow. All former students? All former students. Of, of the history teacher? Yeah. That's really nice. That's really nice. So you joined the Navy. Uh, why did you choose the Navy? Because uh, my father went to sea. He was a poor sailor. Huh. <laughs> he was brought up on the sea. So, 
uh, for, uh, he was a captain in the Navy? Uh, he was yeah. in the Navy? Yeah, he, he's in the British Navy. In the, in the British? From Newfoundland. Huh. And, I see. And uh, he uh, was on a, what do you call a mystery ship. A mystery ship? Mystery ship. It, uh, Radio and radar and everything. I see, a, kind of a secret uh, communications type yes. of thing. And uh, a German submarine come up and uh, took all the supplies off the, <coughs> off the ship and set them in in a rowboat and took Dad aboard the sub and he uh, said, have dinner with me. So dad went and had dinner with him. And there was a German Luger right on the table. And uh, all of a sudden, dad was a mason. The sub-captain was a mason. <laughs> and they yeah, uh, buddy buddies and that was it. Huh. So, so they both were Masons. Both were Masons. They had that in common. Uh, where, where, where was this? Was this off of? Off the port, uh, the uh, Portugal. Off Portugal. Yeah. Huh. So what happened then to your father? Well, well, the Germans sunk the ship and put Dad and the men in their lifeboats, and the sub took off. So then your father then, what, made his way back to Newfoundland? Yeah, he, he made his way to, to um, Portugal, and then they went to England, and then he made his way back to Newfoundland. Wow. That's quite a story. That's, yeah. So you you had good reason to want to go into the Navy. Oh, yes. Wow. Um, so where did, where did you go? You went to basic training. I went to two places, and they were in New York to learn about the the engine room mm. below decks. And uh, then when I went overseas and came back, I was, went up to the upper part of New York and they were, they wanted the fellows for the Seabees. And uh, I was regular in Navy. I said, I don't think I like that. So uh, I didn't go to the CBs. I went to the West Coast. Okay, but this was this was after you had gone overseas. Okay. This is after I had gone overseas. I went to Russia and came back. Okay. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about. Uh, so after you had your initial basic training where you learned about the engine room. So what, what, what was your uh, r rating? Uh, well, I was down, I was fireman. A fireman. And I was down below decks and uh, I was transferred over to a cargo, attack cargo ship. And uh, that's where we left out in New York. What was the name of the ship? Do you uh, recall? It was the Robert Lowry. Robert Lowry? Lowry, yes. Lowry, okay. An attack cargo ship. An attack cargo ship? It was a cargo ship with uh, a 538. On the stern, there was a 350 in the bow, and some t couple 
some 20 millimeters. So this was a, and this was in 1944? Yes. So where did you go from New York? Went from New York and went up to, towards Halifax and met some other convoy sh ships. And we started out across the ocean, Atlantic Ocean. And we uh, all hope and praying we wouldn't get assigned to Coffin's Corner. Coffin's Corner? Right. And what, what is that? Coffin's Corner is a, I took a, this is all the ships lined up right down here in the, in the, uh, be the left hand corner would be what the fellows call Coffin's Corner because oh. that's where the subs was able to pick up the ship. Well, Coffin's Corner referred to a certain place in the formation. Yes. I see. Kind of in the, in, in the rear, kind yeah. of the left rear of the formation? Yeah, the left rear. Okay. And that was the most vulnerable spot? Yes, because that's where they could get at you and get away. Right. And coming out of uh, Halifax, we had uh, British Corvettes that uh, escort. And uh, if you ever want to see a sailor, you ought to see them. Open bridge and everything else, they were rough and tough. Hmm. So they were, is, is that like, is a Corvette like a, it's a destroyer like a, type thing? It's like a D. Destroyer escort? Yes. Yes, okay. So they accompanied you, did, were you? They took us halfway and then the American took us the rest of the way. And you made it safely? Made it safely to Scotland to the Clyde River, and we spent a week there. <coughs> and uh, I went ashore, and the um, Red Cross, they had food and stuff like that for us, but they charged. <laughs> and we, we one of the fellows says, let's go down to the Salvation Army. Went down to the Salvation Army. And they gave us everything for nothing. But the Red Cross wanted to charge you or charge you for food? They wanted, they wanted to charge you. I see. Well, good. So this, so this was in Scott, when you went on, on land from? On land, we went from the Glider River up through Greenwich over to Scotland. And uh, this is what we encountered. So what did you, what, 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 what was your purpose in Scotland? Were, were, were you offloading? Uh, no, no, just reformation of a convoy. So where did you go from there then? To the Falkland Islands. The Falklands, okay. That's n just north of, uh, of S Scotland there. On the, I think it's on the uh, east coast. And then from there, <coughs> we formed up a convoy and we headed north. And going north, we went up past Norway, Sweden, Finland, and into Russia. Half the convoy went to Romansk. Romansk. And, and half went to Archangel. Archangel? And, yes. That's in it. Russia? In Russia. And I was in the half that went to 
wear mask. And uh, <clears throat> we offloaded there and we were there about two weeks before we headed back. So the purpose of the the mission was to de deliver cargo to Russia? Right. And uh, I was quite surprised because on the deck and on the port and starboard side, there was engines. On deck? On deck. Uh, what, what, what kind of engines? Steam engines, regular engines to uh, haul uh, uh, food or drugs or anything like that, equipment. Hmm. And uh, while I was in Russia, on every street corner, there was uh, Machine gun nest. They had a crossfire on the machine gun in the town. And the young kids were running around with more money than you got in your pocket. But the, the worst thing about it, you would see them go into a sewage and take the food out of the, the garbage, I'll okay. say, take the garbage out of the pit for eating. And while we're there, you could go to the International Hotel and uh, one fellow with me says, you don't want to drink, Jim. I didn't drink it at the, and he says, I says, why? He took a bottle of vodka, poured it in the salsa. I didn't know what he was going to do. He put some match to it, and poof, went up. <laughs> this, this, this was the water, this was vodka or water? Vodka. Water? No, vodka. 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 Yeah, I, okay. Liquor. Right, okay. And uh, I said, he said, it's, uh, it's going to do to your stomach. So I said, no way. <laughs> so things must have been, uh, they, they must have been having tough times there in Murmansk. Oh, yes. I mean, all, I, I guess all over Russia. Yeah. And uh, for Christmas of 44, the Germans came over, had, I don't know how many planes it was, they were going to bomb the convoy area, the river, and the port commander said, don't fire your guns, you just, you would uh, just, uh, just place the uh, position of your boats. Well, one guy fired, raised the gun and fired. All of a sudden, it seemed like a 4th of July. <laughs> Mm. Uh, so everybody fired, and so Chris, including your ship. Yeah, <coughs> and uh, so it calmed down, and then the uh, next day was Christmas, and one of the fellows said, "What are we going to do for Santa Claus?" Well, the, the fellow in the sales lo locker says, I got some extra flags. So we got 
flags and cut them up, made a Santa Claus suit. <laughs> and that's where he spent Santa, uh, Christmas of 44. Made, made a Santa Claus suit out of flags? Yeah. And who was Santa? I, d I don't remember. <laughs> And I know who sewed up <laughs> half the suit. <laughs> you? Yes. Wow. Well, that must have been, uh, that was a special Christmas. Well, my mother taught me how to uh, sew that was so. and do knit and crochet. Well, you, you... I knew all this before I went in service. So you had the expertise. What? You had the expertise to do it. I guess so. <laughs> wow. So how long were you in Murmansk? Went there about three weeks, so I'm just guessing. And uh, so Can once we... you offloaded your cargo, so did you travel, I mean, did you walk, go around the city much? Uh, they only allow you to go one part of the International Tourist Hotel. Right. So when you left Murmansk, where did, where did you go? <clears throat> when we left Murmansk, we uh, picked up uh, some ships by the convoy started to head towards England, Scotland, and on the way, oh, it was awful stormy and everything. And on the way, we saw where a ship was in half. Reason the ship broke in half was it got hit between uh, right at the firewall and went like that. Was it torpedoed? Did, yeah. Oh. And it didn't <clears throat> sink or nothing. Just the two sides floated. Two two halves of the ship were still floating. Yeah. <sighs> And so, when we uh, were going to England, we uh, prayed for the uh, ice and waves and everything else. Because out there on the, uh, uh, on the almost the Antarctic, the ship would be way up high, and then all of a sudden go way down low, and then the other one go way up high. And so you, you don't, you didn't see much, but this way they couldn't uh, uh, fire a torpedo. The only thing you could use the a bomber or a, another surface ship. Right. So did you make it, you made it safely back? We made it back to the Falcon Islands, <coughs> and then we made it into Scotland. And half of the convoy went south towards England and we heard they were use them for the invasion. I was lucky the other half I was in went back to the States. So you went you went back to the States? Yeah. Back to New York? Yeah, back to New York. And then from New York I went up Northern Mojave, and then I made my choice between uh, this, uh, the West Coast or uh, 
the sea bees. Right, you, you mentioned that. So, so you had a chance to go into the sea bees, but you decided to go to the west coast. Right. And stay as a, uh, uh, as a fireman? I, I went there, and when I came back and got into New York, I saw how good all the guys who worked in supply and commissary department. Commissary, okay. They ate real good. <laughs> so I transferred over to the supply department. Okay, so you changed your rating? I changed my rating more or less. To, to I mean, you did, what, what did you, uh, I was on security. Security? Yeah, I was doing a lot of security work, and they shipped me to <clears throat> Frisco. From there, I went to the 13th Naval District, and uh, in in C in where where was that? Thirteen Air District is in Washington, and uh, I was up there, and they put, they uh, transferred me over to a ship ship's keeper over there on Lake Union. And then uh, they need a group of fellows to go down. They they need some money sweepers, and so they uh, sent us down to San Diego. And to we, to join a mine sweeper. Hmm? To join a mine sweeper. No, to oh, put. Oh, you were on a mine sweeper. No, to put one in commission. In commission. They had a new one that was job bill and everything. See, on the wax bill that I was on. Wax bill? Wax bill, 786. It's all wood. That was a minesweeper? Yeah, it's all wood. And this way here, magnetic mines wouldn't be able to come up and blow it up. And so, we put it in to commission, and then we're, we're headed for Korea. And we got up as far as uh, San Francisco, and the war was over. This was in 1945 then, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So the war was over. So initially you were headed for Korea and then Japan, or? Yeah, and uh, instead they got <coughs> us back up to um, uh, Seattle, and, we, and the Navy took that minesweeper and put it in Lake Union up the river, and in the river, they use their minesweeper for training and fellows. And then I stayed there for a while. So its job then became a training, training ship? Yes. For like new recruits or? Yeah, all new recruits and so forth. I uh, stayed aboard ship, and I was more like, ship is more like uh, somebody, like a watchman. <laughs> right. So basically, were, were you the only uh, ship keeper on, on board the, the minesweeper? Uh, no, there's maybe two or three of us. And what was your kind of rating? I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure I know the term, or your rank at that, at that time. My rank at that time was uh, supply uh, second class. Second class, so you were a second class p petty officer? Yes. 
Okay. So what did you think of that duty? I mean, did you participate in the training or did somebody else train? Oh, I, I, uh, if I, some of the fellows, I, we showed them where they, how to get around, what to do, and so forth like that. And then, oh, once a month, once a month or so, they would go out for a cruise ah. and take these fellows out. And you went with them? Oh, yeah. That's my ship. It was your ship. It's, uh, after that, it was all reservists. And I was regular Navy. You were regular Navy, okay. Yeah. Right. So how long, so uh, how long did you stay with the wax bill? Well, I was with the wax bill roughly two years. Okay. And then I, uh, <clears throat> went to uh, Bremerton, Washington, and I, I was, I got sick, and after I got well and everything else, they sent me home. So were you in a hospital in Bremerton? Yes. I see, I see. And then I got discharged and they, they told me I had three months to change my mind if I wanted to ship over. And when I came home, I uh, said, well, I might as well join the National Guard just to keep my rate. And, uh, I did, and in the meantime, I went and got my pilot's license. Your pilot's license? Yes, I, I got, I flew, and uh, believe it or not, I used to take off from West of, uh, no, Hanscom Air Force Base. Hanscom. And, I did my cross country hop and everything else. And before I could make up my mind, they recalled me back into service again. They called you back in? Yeah. And about when was that? Would you, just approximately? Oh, in, in the 50s. Like the, er, the, the, the early 50s? Yeah. So, uh, what was this because of the K Korean War, or? Uh, I think it was because the K Korean War. They wanted men like me. So, what did you what uh, what did what did you do when you went back? When I went back, uh, security work. Uh, on uh, on the ship. No, on the base and so forth like that. And uh, we worked a lot with the FBI, huh. Naval Intelligence. Was this kind of, cr I mean, <coughs> criminal type work or? Uh, yes. I see. Which base? I was down in, Jacksonville Naval Air Station. In Florida? Florida, yeah. Hmm. Then I, uh... Were, were you like an MP? Oh, no, no. Not, not M, some, something else. There was no MPs around because 
M visa give you a, give you a way to anybody and say, oh, there's a cop going to have. I see. I wore civilian clothes and so forth like that. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Um, huh. I, <laughs> I remember one time a, a guy was backing out of a spy house. <clears throat> And he had his feet halfway out, and his body halfway in, stealing stuff. Oh. Mm. So did you nab him? Oh yeah. So what were you like, a de detective or something? More or less. Huh. Uh, uh, because if he got away with it, I don't know if I was one to get away with it. And there's no reason for that. <laughs> Stealing is no good. Right, right. So did you do that for some time? Uh, well, I did it for about a year and a little over a year. And then uh, I... Uh, he asked me if I want to get out to see in. I said, oh, let me see. So I come home, and uh, all the good jobs were taken. So I, um, I went and I heard about this here. Professor Pappenheimer over to Harvard Medical School. Dr. Pappenheimer? Yes. And um, he says, I'll let you know, I'll send you a telegram. So you went to see him about a job? Yes. I, I, so I said, okay. So I got home. Next morning, there was a teller. <laughs> Come to work. Just like that. You must have made a, a good impression. Yeah. He, um, I guess he wanted assistance, and I did surgery, machine stuff work, and cannulas, making cannulas. Implants, huh. photography, several different things you do, do in the lab. In the lab. Yeah. So was he like a researcher, Dr. Pappenheimer, or was he a practicing surgeon? Oh no, he's a PhD. He, he's a teacher. I got it. at medical school. At Harvard Medical, and. Uh, we did uh, one month of teaching and 11 months of uh, research. Hmm. And uh, I worked on all types of animals and doctors who came from all over the world to study under the both of us. Uh, he, uh, he says, go ahead, Jim. They want some help, give it to him. Well, I, that's what he did. So, so, so you became quite a medical expert then? More or less. <laughs> I did, uh, I did a lot of craniotomies. Uh, on uh, goats. Goat. On a goat. They were sterile because the goat has bad horns. Right. And the horns protect the cannula that go in the, into the back of the neck here. And so we 
implant a cannula down here and draw up CSF fluid, spinal fluid. Yes. And we're trying to find out where the um, sleep factor was made. And we draw up so much, about 10 cc's all day, one do it, one lump and send it over to Biochem. They fraction it down, and we bring it back. And we had rats, and uh, the ventricles went into the rat, and you inject into the rats. And the rats uh, yawn and go to sleep. Oh. And we're trying to find out where came from. At one time we used uh, cats and they would, they would use too much fluid. So we uh, cut down to a rat. So you basically made the rat sleepy. Yeah. Huh. And uh, they sent me to uh, one fourth, uh, Professor Papanama did. He says, Jim, I want to send you to school. I says, School? I said, They got schooling here. And so he says, Okay. So I went to one fourth uh, to learn machining. Wentworth yeah. Institute. Well, yeah, in Boston. Right. On 110th Avenue. Yep, I know just where it is. <clears throat> and I uh, learned all about machining and tooling. And I come back and I applied that knowledge that I had. It only could maybe cost us about $100. We send it out to get done, and they want something like a thousand, two thousand dollars. So you could do it much less expensively in in your lab, right? Because you had the skill, right? Wow. So how long did you uh, do this work? Well, I worked at Harvard twenty five years. Huh. I don't say much here about it, but... So you did, uh, so basically right after you got out of the service in 54... Right. You worked then the next 25 years or so at Harvard. Right. It's in like 1979 or so, or mm -hmm. 1980 or something like that. Right. I see. And then did you retire then, or...? I retired. Wow. And... One thing we used to do is take a month off vacation. The first year I was there, we took a month off and went across country. And we'd been across country four times by tent and two, two times by travel trailer. Hmm. And the, kid, the kids seen the country that way. That's wonderful. I, that's that's a great way to see the country. So yeah. basically, you and your you you and your family. Yeah. And so, in the winter time, we went up to uh, New Hampshire, uh, snowmobiling. <laughs> It is. <laughs> so I, uh, w I had a good life. You had a pretty exciting, pretty, a uh, very interesting life. If I may, can I, can I go back a little bit? Sure, Just sure. kind of uh, as we kind of wrap up here. Um, when, when you were discharged, uh, so you were discharged back in, I, f I forget, in Boston or from, from 
from where were, were you did discharged from the Navy? I was discharged in Bremerton, Washington. Yeah, in, in Bremerton, Washington. So, and when you came back, you said all the job, all the well, as you put it, all the good jobs were gone. Right. Seems to me that you got a great job. Yeah, I, I didn't expect it, but I fell into it. Well, you more than you fell into it. I'm sure you were. I'm sure doctor, your doctor saw something good in you, and uh, that obviously worked out well for you. Thank you, Jim. Were you happy to? Um, were, were you happy with your service time? I mean, did you oh, consider yeah. that to be a yes, I was, good part of your life? Yes, I was very happy with my service life and everything. But I, when I got out, they had, took me over to West Fox Perry. I was bleeding and they cut me open. And uh, I was right there, all the way up to where your breastbone is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they took out three quarters of the stomach. They did? Yeah. This was, this was, this was an illness or something that you had? Uh had it had, had incurred? It was, it was uh, something bleeding. I see. That's it. So, wow. So, so basically, uh, so that happened just as you were get, get, uh, le leaving the service? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, Did you talk much with your family, uh, you know, your parents or your brother, your brother and sister, when you got out of the Navy? Did you talk no. much about your service? No. Have you talked much about your service with anybody since? No. That's not uncommon. No. Me, me, me too. <laughs> well, now you're talking about it. That's good. Did you jo you join? Did you stay in uh, like the National Guard or the Reserves, or did you get no, out completely? I got out completely. And did you join any v veterans organizations or American Legion? Oh, so you were you were you were a member of the American Legion. I was the commander. You were the commander. Yeah. Of the American Legion, what is it? Post. Post? Two ten sockets. Oh, that's and, that's great. And then I was a service officer, and uh, I I did it for quite a while. You did. That 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 was great. Good of you. Good 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 for you for yeah. the service. I mean, that's a service organization, right? That does right. things for. The community? Yeah, in the, in the community, it was, we had uh, the police department and the fire department, all members signed up and joined. Okay. Great. Well, good for, good for you. Um, do you happen to remember your Navy's serial number? Seven five one three zero oh, six eight. Good for you. Mine's seven zero oh, three eight zero oh, two. Ooh. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. I was just curious as to whether you had, and and you haven't. No. I... It made a big impression on you. Right. That's one. That's one number you don't forget. Right. Uh, do you attend, have, have you ever attended a re reunion or get together of, you know, from the crews of any of your uh, ships or no. duty stations? No. Okay. So. They were, they were all small. Most, I would say 30, 
738 men. Right, right, right. So you, uh, none of it was big crew. Right, right. So how important to you, in terms of your life experience, how, how important was your military service to you? Oh, I would say 100%. It showed me how to uh, cope with uh, problems and how to take care of myself. And uh, when uh, you hear fellows swearing and cussing, I didn't want to be like that. So it got you off. Now you again. You you signed up when you were after you'd finished ninth grade. Is that true? Is that what yeah. you said? I I signed up and went into the service, and then when I about ten years later or so, they said you don't have a diploma. I said no, I don't have one. How do you get this far? <laughs> and I says, well, I did. And uh, in the Navy, they gave you, you have that um, uh, service, service school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, anyhow, the city of Everett put on a, a uh, diploma um, then I was, there was six of us. A diploma di dinner for you? Dinner, the band was there. Now who did this? The town? Or the, the town. Of Saugus? No, town of Everett, oh. where I would have graduated from. Got it. Right, right. And I got a diploma and everything else. You and six other uh, of your classmates, or? No, six other fellows. Who all got diplomas? Yes. Great. That was really nice. So you have a diploma? Yeah, I got a diploma now. <laughs> so, looking back on it all, um, can you think of a particularly memorable experience or memorable you know, person or character? something that really stands out in your mind uh, from all of this? I mean, you've told us some interesting uh, yeah. parts of things, but, you know, kind of wrapping up here. Well, there's one thing we didn't tell you or show you. <laughs> up in Lake Union, I, uh, they said to me, uh, how about you want to go out on a date? I said, what do you mean a date? A date? Yeah, a date. Just chaperone. You want to be a chaperone? So I said, yeah, me and the other fellow said, okay. So we went push and met these here girls. They were all debutantes. Mm -hmm. There was about six of them, and uh, I got a picture of one roaming around on the lake. Of one uh, ro ro rowing you around on the lake? Right. Oh, I see. Good. And you have a picture of that? Yeah, Miguel got one. Great, great. Well, that's interesting. That. Sounds like a that's that's an unusual duty for a Navy man. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. That's great. That's great. So, is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like to share? You know, uh, either with us here or with your family. This is being re recorded, of course. Uh, you know, anything that we might have forgotten to ask or you uh, that you, you know, any final comments you'd like to make? My only comment is 
keep your notes clean and report report on time and if somebody needs a helping hand, give it to them. And God bless them. Sounds like pretty good lessons for life. Great. Thank you, James Nickel, for your participation in this program. It's really been great talking to you. Nice talking to you, Jim. Thank you very much. <laughs>